Hello, I'm Chilly Douglas and today I want to show you how I make my backgrounds for my art journals. Now this is a tag journal which I'm putting together um, and this stage is how I do all my backgrounds and they are so quick and easy and fast to do. So I'm going to show you how I do mine and hopefully you'll be able to pick up some tips. If you're a beginner this might help you not be so scared of doing your backgrounds because I know a lot of people do get a bit worried about doing the backgrounds but you'll see how they do come together when you keep working on them and it's such a quick and easy method to do you can't really go wrong with it so I hope you enjoy the video and I'll crack straight on with it so I'm going to quickly run through these backgrounds and show you how I do mine. I just whiz through them. They don't really take very long at all. Now, you can use any paint that you want, any acrylic paint or whatever you've got, really. I've got a mixture of paints. I've got some Dilutions paints, which I do love. I love these paints. Um, I, I particularly like them, though, because they're just in these little bottles and they make them so handy to use. So I've got my Dilutions paints. I've got some Amsterdam paints, oh, tons of Amsterdam paints um, in the big tubs and the tubes. I've got loads of, oopsie, I've got loads of Pebio paints. These are just a, just a tiny fraction of the paints that I've got. Um, so you can use anything. I've got craft paints, um, just any paint that you've got, just use. You don't need to go out and buy special paints. Arteza paints. So I've got the 60 acrylic colours, which are fantastic. I love. So I'm going to use a mixture of these today. Now other things I have, must have on hand. Good old baby wipes and some kitchen towel blue roll or kitchen towel this is just cheaper a lot cheaper so i use those i have a spray bottle just with some water in it if I decide i want to wet my um, watercolor paper so this is the watercolor pad that i'm using um and it's just beautiful thick card really nice and thick it's 140 pound and it's a nine by 12 inch which is a really nice pad i do like that arteza one and they're ideal for when you're using when you're making tags because it gives you a bit more sturdiness so that's what i'm using today so we'll just crack straight on and get started so i get out a big wipe Just one, <laughs> not the whole pack. <laughs> Put them there. I get some tissue handy. I get my palette knife for when I'm getting out of the, the big tubs. So if you're not sure what colours to use together, just get yourself a colour wheel. You will learn when you mix and match your colours. I use, uh, where's my little cards? I use these little cards, bits of cut off, and I just do colour testing to see what colours look good with, you know, what go with, what goes with what. <laughs> and just see what you like. You know, various types. I use the front and the back. Just, you only need little bits of card. So that works really well to get you used to mixing colours. But if you get yourself a colour wheel, just remember that all the warm colours, you see warm colours from it. Now, red, violet, red, red, orange, orange and yellow, orange, they're the warm colours. It goes, purple is a strange one. So I tend not to mix the purple. I only put purple on top of other dry paint or put the purple down first and let it dry so they're the warm colors and these are the cool colors the yellow green green blue 
blue green blue blue violet so all those you can use together and all those you can use together when you start mixing the two that's when you start to get a bit of mud so it's really handy to have a little colour wheel so <laughs> now I'll crack on <laughs> so all that I do is I get my card we'll use a bit of this dilutions paint to start off with and I'll use this pink flamingo and squeezed orange now I have got a lot of paint but I do lots of different types of art stuff so I do use a lot of paint um, you may have seen or may not have seen um, my paint pouring videos which I've I use a lot of paint for that I do get through a lot so a wet baby wipe and then just get your first layer on simple as I love doing these they're just such good fun to do first layer is on and then what I'll do is get my finger, dab a bit of that paint and just add some of that colour in. This is just the first layer. I'll be doing other layers on the top of various things. But this is just to get some paint on the canvas or on the water colour paper. Now I want some nice bright colour because a lot of the images that I'm going to be using are quite dark so I want to bring them out with the vibrant background so there's the first one I can just flip that straight over because there's very little paint on there and it dries very very quickly so I tend to come in and use the same one because we've already got these paints out so it might as well just do a batch of all the same sort of colours. They can make them look very different even though they're the same colours. So put the pink in there and there's a few things you can do to make them look different but I do want a lot of them very similar because I want a bit of a theme. So if you've got any paints, use what you've got because I know I'm guilty of it. I'm always thinking I've got to buy the next thing to do the next thing. <laughs> you dab it with a bit of dry kitchen paper. So that lifts a bit of the, you have to do this while it's still wet. Lifts a bit of the paint off and gives it a bit of texture. So that's that one, first stage done. You put that to one side. Just give that a bit of a wipe so it's not wet. And we'll go on to the next one. Now, you can also use a brush. If you want to use a brush, a sponge. Um, you can wet your canvas. So I've got a little spray bottle here. We'll do a, move those out of the way so I don't wet them all. You can get this paper quite wet because that's what it's for. So somewhere I've got, got my paint brushes. So just get any old paint brush, it doesn't matter. And I have I always have a tub of water on hand. And I always have some tissue to blot it onto. So, pick up the yellow, the orange rather. So, just as easy to do it with a brush. You can use whatever you want. I know a lot of people do get scared of doing the backgrounds because when you get to this, the first stages, they look like, Ooh, well, that doesn't look much, doesn't look very good. But you have to keep working on them 
and eventually they do come together. So that just looks like you know, a bit of a mess. <laughs> so give that little white blotter on there, pick up some of the pink, then what a little bit, and then you can just come in with some of the pink. Just making it nice and bright, nice warm colours. And then you can, if you want to, just give that a spray while it's it is still wet. And then dab it with that tissue. Just give that a little bit more texture look. I'll just put that to one side for now, let it dry, because it's because I've put a lot of water on there. So I don't want to turn it over and just ruin it all. So my next one, I'm going to stick with the same colours, because I've got them there. And I've got quite a few of these to do. And even if I don't use them in this book for this time, I'll use them in the next one, because I do loads. Always needing them. So... Here's my orange. And then I'll pick up some pink with the baby wine and just smear it on a little bit. Give it like a little bit of a border. And you can rub it in with your fingers. That's that one done. So quick and easy, isn't it? Clear that up. Flip it over. I can flip this one straight over because I haven't got it as wet as the other one. So I'll just use that up that's on there already. Use all the paint. I don't have any waste. If I run out of these cards, I just put it in one of my books. I just have pages like this where I just wipe it all off. So I use that bit of paint up. This is my um, Dilusions. Diane Reevely. I think she, she's brilliant. She just makes me laugh. <laughs> she's just so funny. If any of you have watched Diane Reevely, how many times does she say, I doodle on the plane. <laughs> I do all this. I do it on the plane. This because I travel a lot. I travel a lot. I fly. I fly a lot. And then I do this on the plane. <laughs> she just makes me laugh so much. I love her to bits. She just makes me laugh so much. <laughs> and then she says, It's called a background, because it's a background. It's supposed to be in the background. <laughs> just make me laugh. <laughs> So I'm going to pick a bit of that up just to brush this over the top, make it just a little bit darker. It's a background. It's called a background because it's in the background. <laughs> Fellow Brit, you see, got the same sort of sense of humour, I think. <laughs> there that one both sides done for that stage and then I can bring this one back in now because it's dry enough flip it over and once I've got these out just use that up on there that happens just cleans the table as well there and then I'll put a bit more colour on there because that's a bit light Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll use a bit of this, um, I'll put a bit more of that sunshine orange, or that sunshine, oh, squeezed orange on there. And I'm going to use a bit of this. This is Carmine Red, the Times 4 paint, which is why I need my palette knife. And I just do that. Oh, I've ordered myself one of those... Um, Tonic Studio, the Tim Holtz, the, the black glass mats. So I'm 
very excited about getting that um, that should be a few days and then that'll come so this is just a kitchen glass mat but I'm going to get my Tonic Studios one I'm so excited but they look fantastic a little bit expensive but from everything I've read about them it's worth it right what am I doing I don't know what I'm doing I'm just uh, waffling a bit now aren't I you can also get get your dabber This is a really good way to do these actually. It makes uh, makes life very easy. Just get your dabber and just put it on like that as well. Loads of different ways you can do it. Yeah. So if you haven't got the dabbers, you can just stuck it in your paint log. You can just get um one of these makeup sponges, dab that in, pick up a bit of colour, and put it on like that. You can either rub it in or you can just dab it on. Works beautifully. So, very cheap. You can use any a bit of kitchen sponge cut off or anything you like. There. Done. Put a bit more red on there, actually. Make it a bit brighter. There. So, I'm going to whiz through these. And... Because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do all these. So, I'll put it on fast forward and get through them all. The lilac that I'm using here is Laid Back Lilac by Illusions. So I've done a few warm colours, which are the reds and oranges and all that. And now I'm going to do some cool colours, which are the yellowish greens, greens and blues. So I've got olive green by Amsterdam. I've got greenish yellow Amsterdam. And I've got cadmium green hue, which is Pebio. So I'm just going to get a baby wipe. And I'm going to start with the lighter colour which is this yellowy colour well it's not just yellow it's a greenish yellow so it works nicely with the rest of the cool colours so I put them on my baby wipe like I say I've got a, a lot of the images that I'm going to be using are very dark so I do want some nice bright backgrounds and this is just perfect, it looks beautiful, I love that colour and then I'll use this olive green, ooh, olive green light, I can't wait for my new mat to come, my new Tonic Studio Gloss mat, I'm very excited about getting that. I've wanted one for a while but I'm trying not to keep buying everything on a whim so I have waited and they're quite difficult to get a hold of in the UK so I've just ordered one I thought what the heck I just went for it so that looks nice just using up all the leftover paint and starting a new page in my art journal. I don't like waste and it just gets you off to a good start when you start your journal next time. So the pink I'm using here is actually Permanent Red Violet Light by Amsterdam and the violet is Ultramarine Violet by Amsterdam. So both nice warm colours that mix well together.
this is where I paint over a background that I did earlier that I really didn't like. Sorry about the background noise in the last part. I realised I'd left my fan on and it was um, quite noisy. It's been baking hot here today, but it's a bit later on now. So fan is off. <laughs> so sorry about that, distracting you with my fan. So my next step is to come in with my stencils and put some stencil marks on them. I only do it very lightly and I use the same colours that I've always already used in the backgrounds. So for these warm colours, it was the Pure Sunshine, Squeezed Orange and Pink Flamingo, all Dilusions paints, Diane Reasley. I doodle on a plane. <laughs> I can't help myself whenever I say Diane Reasley, I have to say, I do all my doodling on a plane. <laughs> She'll say, there's nothing, that sounds nothing like me. <laughs> oh dear, stop. <laughs> so anyway I get my colours and I squeeze a little bit out I'll just do this one to start with and then I get my little dabber and you only use a tiny little bit so brush most of it off put my stencil on and just do a little little bit of stencil over the top. Can you see? Because it's just background. Just background. Background's supposed to be in the background. That's why it's called a background. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Simple as that. Threes. Threes. One, two, three. The triangle shape. Turn it over. bit more on that side so simple it just builds up the layers and it's so quick what's that one and I just go through and do the same with all of them just while I've got the stencil out while I've got this color just go through the whole lot and do it with this color I always make sure I don't get the edges because we don't want any square edges. We just want it to look pretty random. There, simple as that. So we can whiz through these. That's what I love about them. So effective and so, so simple. Ever so light, but you can see it's there. If you want to recap of everything I've done and used, then head over to my blog at craftspaceideas.com where I've got all the details. So where I've done the three previously, I'm not going to go in between those. I'm going to kind of touch the edge. So I don't want three like that and then three like that. I want them all to sort of blend together. Take most of that paint off and then just a light touch over the top. For my next one, I'm going to use this Diane Reasley. <laughs> I like Diane Reasley and her stuff. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> so this is the Dilusions Large Stencil. It's the Fresh Dots Large. That's that one. And these are quite small for these big dots. So I won't be doing a lot of it. So I'm going to use this squeezed orange. So it 
take most of that off. Still quite a bit on now. I'll take a bit more off. So we want a little bit on each. And it's just building and building on those layers. So now I'm going to use my greenish yellow and olive green light for my yellowy green ones. I'm going to do it in exactly the same way. So I go through all the backgrounds and do the lighter colour and then move on to the darker colour. And this really does help build those layers and give the background some depth. So again, I'm using the same two colours that I've previously used on these tags to do the stenciling. I just wanted to show you a close up how beautiful they're looking and how it really does give them some definition. Now for the next step, for the backgrounds, I'm going to do some stamping and I've just got some generic stamps, nothing special, but they are some stamps that I like to use. Just some light little bubbly type ones, little splashes. Uh, I've got some little dot ones and some little C wave type ones and this one is I got this off of Amazon I'll try if I can find it I'll put the link below or I'll, whatever I'm using I'll try and put links below um so if you want to find the same stuff you can um this one is retro style waves clear stamps it's just a generic stamp but I like that one I've not had that one long so it should still be available and the ink I'm using is Archival Jet Black uh, by Ranger. So I get my cards. Again, this is very, very quick, although this is going to be a long video, so I do apologise for that. Now there's two ways, you can, well there's lots of ways you can do it. Um, one way is you can get a stencil and just put a little bit across like that which is really effective just nicely in the background but very very effective very simple very easy job done um now the other one i do i don't put these on a pad for this i just and I know you're supposed to do that, put the pad to the to the stamp, but I just do that, and I just do that, <laughs> and I just do that, and I just do that. See, doesn't that look lovely? Now that is a finished background. The next step would be to put the image on there. But for now, I'm just going to go round these and put some stamps on. And I'll use various different ones. I do want to use some of these wave ones because one of the images will look good with waves. So I think this colour will be fine. I um, don't know where my image is at the moment. I'll just do it <laughs> and these are more for borders but 
I'm still going to do it the same way. Just put a bit of ink on there and a bit of a border. I'm putting it on the edge because it's got the straight line and I don't want a straight line sort of inside the area. So I'm just doing it on the edge. Not being fussy, not being overly careful, just getting that ink on there. So that's that one. And I also want some of these because it's got a, one of my images is a mermaid. And I think that would look good with the mermaid one. So just so all I do, and I don't feel like I need to add ink all the time. You see, this one is a lot lighter. That's absolutely fine by me. Don't mind that at all. So that's that one done. Got this little splodge stamp, splodge, splatter, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and just put it down, little splodge. No wonder I get so, I didn't do a very good job of that, did I? But it doesn't matter. It's no wonder I get so flipping messy. Because I've always got my hands stuck in it. Stuck in paint or ink or something. <laughs> Just get some of that ink down there. Done. Not too concerned about the middle because my image is going to go in there. And I just tend to have them, the stamps that I'm going to be using on my desk. And then I just pick one up, use it, pick another one up. Just getting that ink on there. Just having fun with it. Do remember to have fun with it because I know a lot of people get very stressed about doing these sort of things, doing the backgrounds and any sort of art or it's fun. <laughs> Do remember to have fun. <laughs> I love it. I call it flaffing. I say I'm going in my studio to do some flaffing. <laughs> You can't beat a bit of flapping. See, so simple. Again, none of them I'm doing the centre because all my images are going in the centre-ish with this one. They don't always go in the centre, but for this one they are. Splash again. There. Oh, did I do the side now? So this archival ink is the one I like to use because it's permanent. It's not going to cause you any problems. Um, if you use something like a distress ink and then you do like gluing over the top or whatever, anything over the top, it's going to smudge it. There. It's kind of like a border, you see. So I'm going to whiz through these because I know this is going to be a long video.
So I'll quickly show you all the designs because I know this is a very long video. I've got to edit it and I'll speed it all up and everything. So I'm not quite sure how long it'll be, but they look fab. I love them. I love the vibrant colours. I love the contrast with the black stamp. I just think they look beautiful. And as you saw, all I did was very quickly, the only ones I took my time with were these wave looking ones because I didn't want them in the middle with that straight line. So I just took a little bit of time, not much as you saw, but so quick and easy. I love this one. I might do some more of the purple and pink because I really like the effect of those. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. In the next video, I'm going to be putting the images on. I'm not going to do it in this one because it's just too long. And I'm sure you're fed up of listening to me now. So can you see, because this is watercolour paper and it's very textured on this side, it's got the ridges and you can see how it's affected the stamp. See, it's smooth on the other side and that hasn't got all those lines in it, but I really like the way it looks. It looks really grungy. So I do like that effect. So don't be afraid to play with the colours. It's very, very simple. Just test it out. Test your colours, like I say, on these little bits of little bits of card. And then you're not wasting your cut out tags or your your art journals. But I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you in the next video where I'm putting the images on. Thanks for watching and bye for now.